there everyone, welcome back to TNO, the last series of Europe, your host, Herr Mokaliba. But right now, it is August 11th, 1973, and we've gone back in time to test out something a little different. Now, I might test this out when we've taken, out, when taken over the entire world, but because it's supposed to technically happen before War Plan C and after War Plan B, um, we need to do Wrangling the Reichstag. Um, if, I think I've read this one first, before, so if you'd like to read it again, please go ahead. So, I'm not really ex exactly sure how to get the militarists to panic, because currently at the time of this recording, the power is very low, influence is very low, and the approval is very high. Not sure how we're really supposed to get it. I tried to look on the Reddit for information on how to get it, so... I know that people just use cons command, so we go F-A, and then, oh, I guess... I did this off-screen to just double-check it, so, ring in the Reichstag, and let's see what happens. Uh, oh, hello. A little bit of lag. Oh, that's okay. Focus, no checks. Thank you. And let's get to F.A. Thank you very much. Alright, so let's take a look here. So now, we're going to have a little bit of a fun time. I do wonder if we can take this by using cheats, basically, after we conquer the world, in which we'll, we'll double-check it. But let's begin with the Hawk and the Hunter. The Big Daddy knew this day would come. Shorner was always a perfidious snake, waiting for the perfect moment to strike and claim power for himself. Now, with the Reich stronger than ever and the Wehrmacht push with very limits, he plots against the Commander-in-Chief and thereby the entirety of the German people. Should he succeed in overthrowing a government, the Reich will surely be plunged into an abyss from which he will never escape. A death trap of deranged militarism and senseless violence. Goring must rise to the challenge one last time for the Reich and his glorious conquest to be secured in perpetuity. The monster uniform must be destroyed along with each and every deviant traitor who would follow him. And so one day focus, which is great, great, great. And now we have all these other focuses we can do, which kind of sucks that these are kind of over here, but it is what it is. Revive the Freikor. Ooh, that's not bad. Arms under the table. That's not bad. The unsullied service for Lufafa. Protect the bases. Move against Shona. De greatly decrease influence and de greatly decrease loyalty. Replace him. The Afrika Jäger. The Berliner Rat. Nepotism. I like nepotism here. Tesser loyalty. Um, incentivize the new guard. I want to go with the Revive the Fry Corps first. The Fry Corps nearly five decades have passed since the glory days, but the saviors of the Reich live on in German cultural consciousness. Their victories over communism and the <clears throat> Jewry were forever immortalized by Hitler, and their deeds remain the bedrock of our national socialist traditions. The Freikorps membership, or descent from a Freikorps veteran, remains a marker of prestige in our society. No one, would, no one would question us. Therefore, if we were to announce the reformation and reformalization of this old pair military, to ordinary citizens, it would appear perfectly innocuous, a means by which to prepare as many people as possible for war and allow old soldiers to maintain their martial pride. To the fear, however, it would be the largest and most well-trained militia force in our history. A personnel paramilitary is beckoned Call. Our enemies will quick at our numbers should further strife come and arms under the table just in case. Strictly speaking, the Reich has a vested interest in keeping the capacity for violence among the populace at a low level. These are dire times, however, and the new Fry Corps cannot afford to be bound by the same laws and regulations as civil organizations. Anything not directly or directed to the Wehrmacht should be funneled to the militia, guns, grenades, trucks, even light vehicles and helicopters if possible. They must be a true fighting force, able to hold their own against anything the enemy might throw at them. Every militia fighter must be of equal of a hardened grenadier. Followed up with, test their loyalty... Um, I want to go and see what we can do. Maybe Dennis a Shadow. Members among the ranks. The Unsullied Service. Let's see. We'll keep our buffs to the Luftwaffe for the first months of the war. Protect the bases. Mark target in advance. Um, that's not a bad idea. No, we can trust. Luftwaffe will be further involved with the development of the Kriegsmarine, assuring our Fuhrer's influence in the Kriegsmarine. Can we trust them? Um, I kind of want to go with the move against Shwada. All possible preparations have been made, and enough loyalties have been secured. With more practical concerns taken care of, we have some administrative regular organization to do. Shona's clique is deeply entrenched in the OKW, and in several important Rex Commissariats, which simply cannot continue. We must clear the toadies out of their positions and replace them with more loyal and controllable men of the Fuhrer's own choosing. Shona will push back against this as soon as he hears of it, but if we move quickly enough, we should be able to completely displace his clique before he is prepared for an open conflict. I don't know when he's actually going to fire the war, but... Ein Volk, Ein Reich, Ein... Fuhrer. Cool. And then the Unsullied Service. Sure, why not? The Luftwaffe, Goring's pride and joy, has always been loyal to him and always will be. He is their glorious father and their favorite son, Marshal and veteran both. Shona could never taint this branch of the military, the pinnacle of Aryan martial might. Organizing them for a possible conflict with the militarists will therefore be a simple matter. Goring speaks and they obey. Air wings shall be recalled, La air landing divisions put on standby, and Falschemjäger roused from barracks, whilst loyalists in other branches will undoubtedly have a role to play. It is the Knights of the Sky who will bring us final victory. 
protect the bases, of course, knowing that he can never sway them. It's likely that Shorn will instead try to sabotage the Luftwaffe by any means possible. Naturally, for such a brutish man, his first choice will be to attack vulnerable bases and hangars, probably with commando units or bribe turncoats. Security at all key Luftwaffe facilities must be increased dramatically. <clears throat> It couldn't hurt to have better armed units up too, including Panzer companies guarding them. Furthermore, security checks must be tightened up and base personnel monitored closely. Even a single broken link in our chain could have a severe consequences, or severe consequences for our beloved aviators. Cool, and you never know. Uh, not bad. Pretty cool. We'll see what happens with these guys. We will definitely see what happens after the unsullied services protect the bases. Yes, please. Mock targets in advance. Yes, that would be very good. Very, very good. Shona has not yet begun to move against us openly, so there is no risk in scouting his territory. It'll be obvious to his clique what our reconnaissance aircraft are up to over their Rex Commissariats, but they wouldn't dare turn them back. While we do not expect Shona to possess a significant air force of his own, the Alves confirmed that he has been devising an answer to the Luftwaffe. His allies possess large numbers of older aircraft, ostensibly to maintain control over their airspace. It's imperative that we find this mockery of the Luftwaffe wherever it hides and wipe it out for the moment Shona makes his bid for power. A list of targets will be drafted to bomb to smithereens, should Shorn ever move out of line. Very good. And we're going to do this as well. Nope, we're doing that one. Okay, there we go. Cool, thank you. Come again. And then Dennis is a shadow. The Kriegsmarine, never, even after being brought to heel, was never a friend of Goring. Grand Admiral Dennis a shadow still hangs over our great fleet, tainting it with Bormanite conservatism. While the Fjernels finds himself facing his own SWA militarist allies, there still follow too many questions about the political nature of the Kriegsmarine's leadership. It is unlikely that Shona has brought any of them into his camp, but if their loyalty is not secured, they might choose to remain neutral in the power struggle, just as they did during the Burger Creek. Still, if the Fjernels can demonstrate the validity of his new dynamic form of national socialist conservatism, they might be reined in in their gun mighty guns directly the benefit, the balance of power. The recent explosive growth of the Fear's new Frycoil initiative has been met with great enthusiasm by many in the public eye, yet still gone as much derision and jealousy within the military. In particu particular, specific individuals within the Luftwaffe have denounced Goring in the Frycoil and have instead decided to take up arms with the growing Spider League. German High Command has grown, increasingly wary as of late, as Hans Spado and his cronies have continuously gained momentum and support for the causes. Spado and other political opponents have caused quite a stir amongst the German populace recently, as many began contemplating the legitimacy of Goring's position as Führer, with powerful political opponents such as Spado vying for control. This sort of action must be taken in order to avert a military takeover, or worse. Oh boy, you never know. And we'll place the field marshal, probably. The sickening pause before the drop. Um... Not. Shwander is consolidating his position. We'll try to get through all the focuses before we have to do that stuff. It's a little disappointing. There might be something actually here, but we can't see because this other stuff is already here, maybe? No. Oh, well, maybe we already did it. No room for hunger? I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, Yeah, this one. We know who we can trust in Air Force with the Navy. Can we trust the Kriegsmarine? Um, find the trustworthy. Well, we'll see what happens. Let's go with test your loyalty. Since assuming power, the Fuhrer has seen many new generals commissioned. The cream of the officers... A Reich's Officer's Corps. These young men are all seasoned veterans of many conquests, having learned as much on the battlefield as in the academies. Their loyalties remain undecided, likely due to the preoccupation leaving them little time for politicking. Now, however, with Shorner's clique working to shore up their strength, the young generals have become a target for the military's entry. The traitor will surely attempt to bring them into his camp by any means necessary. We have to sway them before he has the chance, by hook or by crook. Memos among the ranks. Recently, there's been whispers going around the ranks of the Kriegsmarine. A, a similar feeling to that felt during the mutinous days of the Civil War. It's only a matter of time before these whispers turn into an outright rebellion, and something must be done, in order to ensure utmost stability and loyalty in these trying times. It's become paramount that we remove the traitors who conspire against us, while Shona has influence in the Navy. He's not the only one. Hans Spado has also managed to get some loyalists among the many admirals, and while he's not outright hostile yet, we can not exactly trust him. We must ask quickly if we are to maintain control of the Navy. However, we must carefully choose who we are going to remove, as time is running thin and cannot help to antagonize the entirety of the Kriegsmarine. We must choose who to purge, the Spiderlites or the Shornoites. Shorn is a much larger threat. Uh, the following Kriegsmarine foresight will decrease military loyalty, uh, power and influence. Will increase military loyalty. He's a much larger threat. We know who we can trust. Decrease influence and decrease loyalty. Further involved with the development of the Kriegsmarine. Um, assuring our freer's influence of the Kriegsmarine. Increase loyalty and influence. Uh, we'll have lots of Kriegsmarine under his influence. I want to go with this one. We know who we can trust. We know. Namely, not the Kriegsmarine. During the Belga Krieg, they fled to Crimea, showing that the only colors they flew were their own. They might have professed loyalty to the Reich above all else, but how could we ever believe that excuse when Goring was clearly the only legitimate fear in the first place? The Kriegsmarine has been insubordinate for years, dithering at every old and not even bothering to maintain the correct political standards for its leadership. The only appropriate uh, solution is cut this cancer infecting the Reich. Purge the ranks, from the admiralty down to the lowliest 
e-boat crew. They will be of little use against Shorn anyway, so who will necessarily see with that? And Air Force with the Navy. Ultimately, the Kriegsmarine will always be secondary to the Hay on the illustrious Luftwaffe. With the old guard and unreliable crews purged, we should begin the long overdue process of reforming our naval command to correctly represent its position. We've had quite enough of the salt of worn old men and disloyal drunk sailors, naturally. The most logical choice here is to put men who have experience in combat, organization, and administration in charge, but there is currently a dearth of skilled seamen for some time. Thankfully, the Fuhrer knows plenty of talented and politically reliable men in the Luftwaffe who are due for promotions. These men will form a new board to replace the Admiralty and ensure the swift reorganization and, more importantly, Loyalty of our Rabon Kriegsmarine. Reward faithful service. Increase loyalty. Never look the other way. Trade trials for war crimes. Um. Hmm. Never look the other way. Well, maybe we'll try this one. Though we've always tried to be merciful to the lesser races of the world, it is an unfortunate reality that many are recalcitrant children who refuse to acknowledge the better as well. As the saying goes, spare the rod, spoil the child. We've been tolerant up until this point, but recently some of our subject peoples have been far too uncooperative and even violent. We cannot show weakness in this crucial time. We must discipline these ungrateful savages with bull and bayonet. Still might balk at the task, but there is a number of officers in the Shornreich tradition who will follow any order, no matter how harsh or in the eyes of weak foreigners. Inhumane. Very, very good. And trials for war crimes. Shocking. A number of our best officers, once the loyal and true paragons of the Reich, have been directly implicated in horrific war crimes against non-Aryan populations. That something like this could have happened on Schoen's watch is unthinkable. How could any good, honest German ever succumb to such violence and depravity? State media will make this outrage known to the whole Reich, and the guilty parties arrested and brought to trial immediately. National daddyism does not permit acts of senseless brutality and genocide, and nor will the fear. Alright, everyone, so now we can do either incentivize a new god, or we know where you live, but... Because we played Goring quite a bit this campaign, probably one of my longest, longest campaigns, especially in TNO, I see our expenses will rise sharply. Hmm, we like spending a lot, so if you'd like to read about this one, as well as this one, please go right ahead. But how will we incentivize a new god? Despite the claims to be proud, principled men in the Prussian tradition, many of our new generals are anything but. A part of it is simply the nature of power. Money is ultimately merely another means by which to acquire it in that regard. It is no less effective a currency than blood. Those younger generals who are not yet wholly loyal to either Shorn or the Fuhrer could easily be swayed in the latter's favor by the sweet allure of higher salaries and pensions or even gifts straight from his own purse. Making someone's life a little easier rarely goes unappreciated after all. Then I just realized that we could do this one to reward faithful service. We could spend more money, more money there, but, eh. You know what? Mm, you know, I might actually go this way then. Never look the other way. Trials for war crimes. And then we know where you wed, went, or live. Yeah, mm, this one this one's going to increase the loyalty. We don't want more loyalty. Uh, yeah, you know what? I don't want more loyalty. Less loyalty. We know where you live. Gold, jewelry, and fine wine. Who do these upstart generals think they are? Middle-aged bourgeoisie housewives? The true German also needs no incentive beyond patriotism. If he cannot find it within himself to devote the entirety of his belonging on being to the Reich, then perhaps he needs a little reminder of what is at stake. There will be no tolerance for preening, a vainglorious children within the Wehrmacht's command structure. They will serve because the fear demands it. All suspect officers will be closely monitored by the Gestapo, and any cowardice, corruption, or disloyalty duly, duly punished by the most severe means possible. I apologize for my indecisiveness, but if you about that, please go right ahead. As much as I'd love to do that side... I want to be at least a little bit more consistent here, so. And your family. Some young officers think themselves brave. With their egos bloated by rank and rewards, they believe that they are above discipline and loyalty. Not even the harshest threats to their livelihoods are taken seriously, perhaps due to their historically lax attitude towards officer autonomy under the militarists. So they will soon learn that Goring is not Shona. He does not give or tolerate his subordinates living corrupt lives as petty kings of their divisions. If threatening their persons is insufficient, perhaps the family should become involved in present matters after all. Isn't family the core of Aryan values? Very good. And your families. And we'll replace the field marshal. Shona once served ably, but no longer. Having lived through both world wars, the West Russian War, and all of the Reich's subsequent conquests, he's getting old and tired, surely. The old warrior deserves peaceful semi-retirement in a quiet, less stressful role. Reich's Commissar Kamkachka, perhaps. The Führer certainly that his old friend will be most grateful to have a few, to have quite a few Führer commitments. And to be very, 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 very far away from Germania. It's such a stressful place to live, after all. But a couple of comments, my friends, right? A couple of comments, such as, play as Egypt or Australia. I, at the time of this recording, I don't think either country of Egypt or Australia has content. So I don't think they have a focus tree, unique focus one, at least for now. When they do, we'll probably play as them. Sometime, sometime. 
Another one has, uh, says from the last episode, the world has become very brown. I'm not sure why it's very brown, but you know we're not that brown. We're kind of like a black nation. I would say we became more black when we conquered the entire world, but yeah, maybe that's just me. Um, let's continue on with, ooh, the Africa Jäger, the Berliner Rat. Oh, nepotism. I kind of like the nepotism here. Um, as much as I love this guy, though. Yeah. I kind of like him, but let's do nepotism, because we like him. Frankly, Goring had, has had enough of self-proclaimed suitable candidates. All these ambitious, self-serving men squabbling to take short in his place. What good are they, really? How can any of them ever be trusted to abide by the Fuhrer's directives? Any one of them could be another short in waiting, or another traitor seeking to stake his claim on the Fuhrer's ship. No. We need a good man, someone we can trust, someone who will need the challenge of Fuhrer's right to rule or attempt to rock the boat. Someone like Theodore Goring, beloved nephew of the Fuhrer. Underqualified, perhaps, but... Also reliable. Besides, who's to say he won't learn on the job? The sickening pause before the drop. General Feldmarshal Ferdinand Schorner read the letter again in the light of the Muscovine dock. Oh, Don filtering through his quarters window just to make sure he'd read every detail correctly. Now is not the time for a mistake after all. To General Feldmarshal Ferdinand Schorner, you are hereby relieved of your position as the Commander in Chief of the Wehrmacht of the German Reich. The fear which is to convey that this is not meant to be seen as a personal insult to your person. He expresses the hope that you will continue to serve the Reich admirably, as always, in a new position of your choice. Hal Goring, Albert Bormann, OKW Layers under the fear. There it was in plain German. The fat dude had made it his play. Shouldn't have reviewed his plans mentally. Goring had moved a few weeks earlier than he had expected. It didn't matter that much at this point, but still, for a fleeting moment, Shouldn't have wondered where that initiative had been earlier. The old soldier's hand moved to the nearby radio set to buzz a static, then Raymond's voice. Field Marshal? Things have moved quicker than anticipated, but don't worry. Nothing has changed. Tell Cancel, the radio himself, I will deliver Mumet's orders personally. A pause as the words came through on the other end, then right away, I'll report back at once, my fear. Sure enough, smile, but there was no laughter in his eyes. No turning back now, my friends, no turning back. Just a slight bit of nepotism, and then things are gonna go kaboom. As much as I want to do this guy, I would love him as OKW Chief, but hey, you'll see what happens. Let's see what happens, my friends. Don't worry about the debt. The debt doesn't exist as long as him and Goring is here. And, ah, Heinrich Theodor Goring appointed as OKW chief. Plastered all over the newspapers and TV screens of the Reich today was an image of the Fuhrer, smiling and shaking the hand of his new legal nephew, Theodor, Heinrich Theodor Goring. Both were dressed in military attire, Goring with the iconic pearl white uniform of his precious Reich's Marshal rank, and his nephew, much to the surprise of many, and the grandiose uniform of the Luftwaffe Field Marshal. General Field Marshal Heinrich Theodor Goring appointed OKW chief read the headlines that morning, doubtlessly causing many military members to nearly choke up upon their morning drinks. Could the Fuhrer really have been so bold as to appoint his family into the highest possible chief, highest post achievable by a member of the German military? The eyes of the nation did not deceive them. Heinrich Theodor Goring had been appointed by the Fuhrer as the head of the Wehrmacht in this time of crisis. A former Second World War Luftwaffe pilot turned career officer. He has had a long career in the armed forces, but not as fruitful as a career as many other candidates that stood in line for the military staff job, surely. Heinrich Goring was appointed by the Fuhrer. Uh, to act as a loyal puppet and control the Wehrmacht, something that he has lacked from the start of his reign. However, it remains to be seen how well the militarists will swallow this brash appointment. We're confident he will maintain a very tight grip. Enter branch exercises? Sure, why not? Ignore enemy aid advance? Sure. Oh, and nothing bad could happen from here, right? Ein Volk, ein Reich, ein Führer. At last, we've had doubts, our fears even, that Shona would not go quietly, that he would go to any lengths to dominate the Reich. The eruption of a second Burger Krieg seemed inevitable as a field marshal gathered his forces and rallied countless traitors to his banner. Those who enemies of the Reich who remained no doubt waited with bated breath to see our mighty empire fall to infighting once more, and yet, their dreams will never be realized. The treasonous field marshal has been unseated from his office and stripped of any capacity to wage war upon us, all without firing a shot, relegated to the furthest reaches of Siberia and with his allies bought, bullied or broken. The monster in will never again threaten the Fuhrer's rightful mandate. Heil Goring. The Rat Shorn has finally been dethroned. Heil Goring. Kamkachka become owner controller of Kamkachka. Nice. Look at all the stuff you remove. That focus will change. Very cool. There you go. Nothing bad will happen, right? The beginning. They say that the sacking of Feldmarshal Shona was controversial would be a gigantic understatement. Even with the fear of Goring's efforts to decrease Shona's massive influence in the hair. 
<clears throat> Parts of the army protested furiously against what they saw as the final straw on a long list of the furious aggression against the army for being a militarist, he's, as he so claimed. Goring was taking quite the turn towards Bolshevism, at least. That's what the protesters claimed. On the other side of the aisle, spider lights applauded Shona's removal. However, this approval was quickly turned into fear of their own. What spills of Shona attempting another coup rippled throughout Spider's supporters, and soon they became as paranoid as the Shona rights. If Shona truly was a sec trying a second coup, would Goring stop him? What would happen to Spado? What would happen to them? From this moment on, perhaps, the consequences of such an earth shattering push was inevitable. Divisions reported to, hedge, to HQ more and more frequently. Strange new exercises were scheduled and rescheduled. Most importantly, Herr Schoener headed east to give a speaking tour, and Field Marshal Spido had to ignore for administrative duties. All these actions were viewed with suspicion, but nothing could be more about them. Nothing would rock that boat harder than arresting Schoener and Spido, and as it turns out, one does he need to rock the boat when it's already sinking, as of now. Schoener and thousands of soldiers march on Germania. Determined to right the wrongs that Goring had pushed under them. Their intentions, while not outright stated, are beyond clear. To the north, Spider marches south on Germania, presumably in a coup attempt of his own, or perhaps solely to stop Shona from completing his own. Germania itself is in a state of chaos as thousands of flee into the countryside up from the impending battle. The fear is only hope now that his new field marshal remains loyal to his side. Theodore Goring can't betray his own blood. Oh boy! Goring's Germany. Oh, this is gonna be a mess. Look at that. Oh, it's gonna lag so hard. Oh, it's gonna lag super hard, I bet. Um, Goring's Germany annexes the GGR. We create the Recht Massische Reichsregierung. And, oh. Shona's Germany, Spado's Germany, Goring's Germany. Ein Führer! Treason without compare struck the Reich once more. We are once again engulfed in civil war. The traitor Hans Spado has risen up in rebellion. And the former Field Marshal Ferdinand Schorner has established himself as a rubber claimant to the Führership. We've come so far, conquered so much in the name of National Socialism and the Aryan race, we cannot afford to fail now. Our great Führer has led us through trials to eclipse even the world wars. He's defeated fleets of thousands, crushed rock and metal and bone beneath the grinding treads of the Wehrmacht. His reign will not end this way, not at their hands. The wars he has built will endure for a thousand years. Sieg Heil. Yes. Alright, so I have no idea what's going to happen. You know what? Let's start it off by saving. Um, I guess the Ironhide's pact is probably dead by now, right? Look how laggy it is when you just try to save the game. And that's just Hoi 4 in general. It's not even TNL. Alright, boys. We got one more good war in us, don't we? Um, I'm just take all of you. 40. Thank you. Split your half. Boom, boom. You're going to be the main front against both sides here. Or not. Okay. Good to know. 30. Good bugs, Jaeger. You are the Mountaineers, Pops. You're basically infantry, so there you go. Burgerware, huh? Well, let's get the third guy going then. There you go. And you go right there. Honestly, uh, who do we have left under the command? Kigosman? Yes, not bad, not bad. You have uh, uh, you, and then we have Friedrich Forsch. And for you guys, you're probably the weakest link here. Um, Leo Hep. This is not very strong, I'll be honest. Um, Kaelin, yes, yes, yes. Well, this doesn't go too badly for us, you know. Because that's going to be that group. Oh, hello. Please go, please go. And you all under the direction of... Oh, our nephew. And Heinz Joglem. Upgrades, yes. Nephew, yes. You, yes. Anything, yes. No, yes. Okay, good, 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 good. Upgrades. Um, m Expert's fine. Cool. I want you to take out these guys up north first. Whee! Planes. We have any spare planes. We should have quite a few spare planes, right? We got a lot of transport helicopters. Holy crap. Uh, these guys just had to rise up, didn't they? We just wanted what was best for the nation, but no, these pieces of garbage wanted to rule the world themselves. Let's double that up. Uh, double it one more time. There you go. And give me one fighter. Give me a second cast. Do that again and do it right there, too. Oh, get some planes here, too. What is this? Uh, strategic bombers. I don't really care too much about those guys. Good enough. That's the end of the, the front, please. Thank you. Oh, we have three millies, huh? Jet helicopters. APCs improve transports. Um, there you go. There you go. There you go. And then there you go. Should be good enough, right? Let's 
Ah, so then budget boost. Go ahead and spend more, my friends. Hey, no debt. Gold ring. Magadan. Whoa. Well, if you guys can make it, that's great, but, uh... Oh, the Deutsche Ostgarasonin. Oh, that's kind of cool. Urals are just independent. Heinrich Bar. Von Baer. Very cool. North Africa. Yeah. Recht Massischer Reichsregierung. Regierung des Nationalen Wiederaufbau. Wiederaufbaus. Look at that. Council on Chaos. Must have been. Nothing there. Shona's Germany. Oh, they do have. Oh, they do have more unique focus trees there. Okay, that's kind of cool. Ein Volk. Ah, so he's got Ein Volk, and this, he has Ein Reich, and we have Ein Führer. I'm glad I saved. You know, let's save the game one more time because we can. I might actually play this in several different runs. Then. I was not expecting this to actually happen. So cool. Um, do we build up? Ah, Switzerland. I guess we can build some stuff here. It doesn't really matter too much. I think we'll still do okay, but. Really kind of cool, actually. I go do that too. More millies. Ein Führer. Have I read this one? Yes, yes, I have. Close air support attack, more output, less planning speed. The key to victory. Schoener might have had his conscripts, conscript holes, but we are the sole bearers of the Germanic martial tradition, no doubt. No thug, violent thug pressed in his service and armed with a rifle producing some god forsaken Reichskommissariat can hope to match the true son of Germany. We will demonstrate to the world once and for all that German steel, backed by German discipline, is the finest in the world. Only ensuring the continuation of our tradition of high quality soldiers and equipment will keep us safe from the tide of treachery rising all around us. Um, if you guys can make it, great. The fringing phrase. Urgent news, my fear. The secretary entered the room again, and his eyes drawn to the paper he carried. He quickly glanced over its contents, his eyes skimming for anything he had missed. Fr finally, when he was sure he had cleaned all the important parts from the letter, he began his report. Reichskommissar Athelt reported from his Reichskommissariat so the troops are demoralized, unsupplied, underfed, and totally unmotivated. Needed resistance has skyrocketed to almost unprecedented levels. He reports that his situation is untenable and he's made the choice to withdraw. Which commissariat is that? Goring cut in, smoke swirling from the tip of a cigarette. The secretary looked back down at the letter for a moment. Uh, Reichskommissar Turkestan, my fear. Turkestan, huh? Where's that? Goring responded, a hint of confusion in his voice. Central Asia, Herman. The secretary responded. Goring sat quietly for a moment as if he was trying to remember something. Finally, he chuckled softly. I swear, I almost have forgotten we'd ever gotten out of Central Asia. Must have slipped through the cracks of my memory at some point. Oh, uh, with all the recent events. There was another silence. Finally, Goring looked directly at the secretary. We really got far out there, didn't we, secretary? Yes, my fear, we did. Such a massive empire was bound to collapse. Oh, that's so sad. Why? <sighs> I don't like this. I prefer the other route we did. But uh, the twin invasions. <clears throat> the Haggard Führer was lost in his own thoughts as aides and officers scurried around the improvised war room in the München government building that was serving as their temporary HQ. Schoener's move had not been wholly unexpected, it was true, but even so, the amount of troops that had raced to his banner had been unnerving to say the least. Far more than the officer corps had been traded to the Reich than Goring ever could have imagined. Reimer, Wagner, Mummerat, Hagana Schoener. Mazier and Heusinger to Spidel. They would pay for that, he vowed. If they ended up surviving this calamity, he would make all the traitors pay a hundred times over for the despoiling his Reich. Soon had his made a stronghold in the east, while Rex Commissar Muscovy was able to provide supplies and reinforcements quickly. Meanwhile, that rat Spout had moved to the north, where the darned architect had made a stand what felt like years ago. He was surrounded by darned traitors. He realized that when Heinz had been talking to him, asking a question, his nephew's beady eyes darted this way and that in fear. When he died some day, would this be the man who would have assumed his place? An unpleasant thought, if ever there was one. My apologies, Heinz. I must be must have been distracted. Could you please repeat whatever you were saying? Heinz's temples were graying, but Goring could never shake the feeling he was looking at a man of much less age and competence. I I was just asking if you thought we were safe here now? I mean, with the bombers and all that? His whining voice trailed off into nothing. Goring remembered. Another time, another war, when he had been asked if bombers could penetrate the Reich's bastions. That time he'd been full, full of bravado and dashing charm. But now? Go ask Stun up if you want to know, and please don't bother me again with this. He said it flatly, devoid of any real emotion. It was all he could imagine. Imagine. Manage. It all fallen apart. Is this really how it was going to come to an end? We're not worried these guys yet. Free millies? Oh, good. We're gonna need a lot of this stuff. Get a lot of guns. We still got a lot of planes and such, though, so that's not too bad, actually. Um. Yeah, I might. Oh my gosh, they do have other Rex Commissariats. That's insane. Can we go to sort of war with these guys, please? That's a cool flag, though. They don't have a lot of. Ooh, how, how strong are they? 
Oh, they have a lot of divisions over there, too. Up to 58. Um, yep, actually, you might literally just be able to push in through here. Grab them up and go. Because I'm waiting for these guys to get involved. Nice. Key to victory. Followed up with is on the front line, or is on the work. Let's do the workflow first. German industry remains unrivaled, and we must keep it that way to secure victory. Our factories are filled with strong, dedicated working men, but they slacken and grow restless as word of the war reaches them. This is unacceptable. The bosses must drive them to work harder than ever before, and every bullet that arrives too late could see another valiant soldier of the Reich murdered by the traitors. Failure to dedicate one's entire heart and soul to work in this crucial time is entitlement to desertion, and will be punished as such. And now they're going to go to war with us. Oh, wait, who else? Whoa! Look at the Italian Social Republic. Let's go in. You should be able to win easily, right? Oh, we're going to need some more fuel. Oh, did... Oh, you guys, these guys are... Kill Everyone's killing each other again. Uh, of course. As expected. Honestly, I don't know if they're going to they're gonna attack us, but hopefully it's not too soon. Garrison sees a suit to roll. News of the Civil War taking hold of the fatherland came to South Tyrol. Only shortly after they did th this, that something did like after that did something serious happen. They seized the possessions of the fatherland without warning. They went forth under the careful eyes of their officers. They did what they had to. Uh, be they air bases or outposts, be they radar stations or communication centers, be they important resource centers or minor border posts, all of these were taken over. Civilians could only watch the German soldiers move in haste. They were shooed away and ordered into their homes. Non-coms yelled off who lingered on the streets and around the corners. Soon the radios blared with the pronouncements of the garrison officers, but as they vanished, there was battle. The little soldiers who tried to oppose the garrison were disarmed. Most of them, but a few tried to put up a fight and they would always be outnumbered, all gunned, outmaneuvered, and in the end, destroyed. Their blood would flow out of their wounds. Those of the comrades who survived either would surrender, flee, or keep on fighting until they too perished. And the resistance would not be enough, after all their struggle. <clears throat> What they've achieved was only delay, but delays do not halt the daring action to the garrison. Soon enough, victory was achieved. Sudro now belonged to them. We've lost our hold over northern Italy. Clan Ozzian has fallen, as the civil war rages on. Native resistance movements within the Klein Azin have risen in desperate fury and torn the Reichs from Sariat and its rulers into bloody ribbons. The autocracy of the ruling general, a Spadalet reformist, has come to a bloody end, and the Greeks and Turks have reestablished their natural borders. With the war continuing, all we can do is continue to watch as our hard earned territories wrench themselves from our grasp. Another casualty of the war. Well, that sucks. I don't like this. I don't like this focus. This, this focus sucks, but. Why do we go to war with these guys up north? Oh, you don't have anything there. Okay. That's good to know. The all Russian Congress. Oh, oh! Okay. Look at these guys, yeah. And then you guys, David Drag Dragunsky. You guys are doing a really good job, regardless of what's actually going on everywhere else, so. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, I'll let everyone come on in. Uh, Tyrol calls for aid. We have reports from Tyrol. Our garrison in Italy, after seizing what assets they possess there, has requested our aid uh, against the CLN. They're waiting for a decision on this part as they prepare to face them down and hold on for as long as they possibly can. It's up to us to assess what plans we carry out. If we proceed with our request, our garrisons can safely evacuate from Italy, provided that we bear whatever losses we may have put up with. This also means that we will be intervening on their behalf against Italy, also bringing attention to us once more. However, given the garrison our support, we'll surely secure their experience and their equipment, as well as manpower for the Fatalem. If we do not, then our garrison will be left to fend for themselves against the CLM without her aid. We can be sure that they will not last long. This may upset those in favor of saving the men, but it would save us lives as well as face. Also, the battles we have to launch against the CLM may not be won. Who knows what tricks the Italians may have come up with as we march into their own territory. With these plans, it is up to us to make a decision, quickly so. Time wasted on excessive planning may yield no no nothing but pain, and choosing not to carry out either of these plans may only prove us indecisive. Um, Kuwait. We need more fuel. Um, we must help our men. We can help them? We must help our men. Because if we move fast enough, these guys will, like, just die. They will literally just die. A little bit of lag. What's going on? Ah, okay. Should have seen that one coming. Well, these guys are not going to come kill us. We can honestly probably come kill them faster, so... Let's go! 
As long as these guys don't kill us, the Levant in flames. The situation throughout our vast nations continues to deteriorate. The latest separatists uh, who have risen up against us have occupied Israel and Palestine. Our ex commissar Arabian has so far failed to keep these groups under control and check, and they have been almost entirely booted from the area. The city of Jerusalem has also broken free, but it set itself up as a designated neutral zone, and Arabian does not have the resources to rein them in for now. We have to accept the deteriorating situation. Uh, the situation only grows, of course. Ever worse. United Arab Republic? Mosh Dayan. Jerusalem. Who are you? Khalid? That's kind of cool. Well. We did all that for nothing. Hey, look at Ethiopia. Wow, look at this. Oh, wow. He's here. Look at that guy. Somalia look, do be looking kind of weird. Mr. Qatar, look at that. Uh, Kuwait, nice. Mr. Hejaz. God, that sucks for everybody here. They have a lot more divisions than I thought they would. Key to victory. That's on the work floor. Yeah, we're doing very well here. Surprisingly well. Oh, who died? Oh, there goes those guys. Okay, whatever. Go, 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 go. Yeah, take the, teach the Italians another lesson. The Libyan Republic. Everything is falling apart. I don't like this route. Look at that chin. He reminds me of Benito, man. Benito Mussolini. An old fox with no more tricks. With the end of the Burger Creek... Uh, oh, look at that. Volunteers from all sides return to their homes after risking their lives in the defense of their ideals. Some Somehow will be remembered more than others. Today, the entire of mocked honors the final retirement of Erwin Rommel. The desert fox, who led the italo german invasion of British Africa. The old general, who had been living as a civilian for almost a decade, had rejoined the army in the Civil War, bringing with him his legendary ability with panzer tactics, while no longer a tank commander due to his old age. His keen insight into armored warfare, combined with the legendary reputation that followed ever since the days of the Africa Corps. Inspired by many to fight well beyond their own capabilities. Now, however, the tired Fox has announced his second and final retirement from the Wehrmacht, citing his failing health and the sadness from the fighting fellow Germans as the main reasons, while some would have wanted him to keep him to help rebel the armed forces. No one dared suggest it, so respected he was. After a final parade where he saluted the crowd atop an old Panther tank, he was escorted to his home covered in even more medals than he already had. To enjoy his final years, the old Fox is in his rest and shorn of fleas. The pans was crushed, whatever lay before him, and the men loyal to the fear marched on, their morale soaring and their rifles singing. The air filled with fire and smoke, with screams of dying and the shouts of living. The helicopters and the planes conquered the skies, their pilots and crews watching from above how their traitors' countrymen paid the price, and adding to their heck of war. They unleashed their bombs and their rockets and their missiles. The defenders would try to answer back, but not before any were reduced to shred and shreds of flesh and bone of fabric and shrapnel. But the leader would not want to suffer their fate instead. Just as whatever remained of those forces were driven to capitulation, he escaped to shore as Germany and assumed control of it. Those who welcomed him were either relieved to see him continue the fight or privately in dread, knowing how much more blood would need to be spilled for only two outcomes. One for his own good and another for the deaths of him and those who did dare to stand by him. There can only be one sensible thing to do. Keep fighting up to the bitter end and from here, we shall he shall do just that. The fatherland will be ours no matter how long it makes or takes us to do. And we've got another beast to slay, too. Do we not? Do we not have another beast to slay? I don't want to kill off all these guys. I really don't. Turkey. These guys. We already did it once. I mean, we can do it again. Don't get me wrong, but still. But stills. Alright. Is on the work floor. Is on the front line. All soldiers have fought long and hard, and many for years on end. Still, we must demand one more great effort from the hail. No matter how many officers are unspoiled, ungrateful grunts have defected, the truest and nobles of the great ideas remain at our side. It is they who shall carry us to victory, and all possible measures must be taken to maximize the potential. Whether that is wages to keep them loyal, food to keep them happy, or pevitin to keep them awake and active, the loyal soldiery will have what they require and give their all in thanks to the Fuhrer. In this hour, no alternative to absolute dedication is permissible. Alright everyone, so now we got to get the Palermo Pact, Regierung de something, and no faction, so I don't know what's happening up here, but we can probably help out our guys and beat the living crap out of these fine folks over here, right? Let's go in, boys and girls. I can't imagine we would be too strong. We do have the option, though, like, we still have the War Cabinet. The only person that we still have here is Klaus von Stauffenberg. Um, actually, State of the Cabinet, yeah. And declare war on the participant, and the participant, and take off Goring's training wheels, so... Um, okay. Why can we not go to war with these guys? Seriously. Rally the students. What are you, trying to be a spare? Uh, other comments include, like, someone said this campaign was just Goring hallucinating, probably when he was dying, you know, and... 
45 or whenever he died in real life. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, basically, we in the last episode, we established a Wolfenstein scenario, pretty much. And from the last episode, like someone said, like, basically, I hope you like what's coming next with the Second Civil War here. And someone says, the Reich's commissars can probably collapse and have a worldwide civil war. Pretty much. But that's exactly what we're doing. But supplies from Ukraine. An unfortunate but unavoidable side effect of the Reich's recent expansion is the stretching of our supply lines and the shortage of vital resources accompanying it. The traders have access to all the industry and resources within the lands they illegally hold, including those which are central to the war effort. Thankfully, with Ukraine secured for the rifle fuhrer, its vast supplies of oil, steel, and grain remain available to us. A very useful thing indeed, with our lands once again riven by war. The Balkans remain secure and difficult for an any invader to take, so our eastern supply lines will be redirected to travel through that region alone. We cannot afford another shortage right now. Here's more if we ever lose control of the Rex Commissariat, but we'll see what happens. And then, soldiers from the Balkans. The Balkan garrison. As the hardcore of the Wehrmacht, Cornwall might have been the best posting, but no amount of watching over shepherds and fishermen could have made that garrison the match of the Balkan men. Those grizzled of veterans now have been fighting a ceaseless guerrilla war against rebellious subhumans and Bolshevik partisans for nearly 30 years. More importantly, they have remained at arm's length from the political intrigues of Germania. They are strictly loyal and obedient force of soldiers and airmen at the Führer's beck and call. That's a good thing that we have subdued all major partisan groups in the region for such men. Uh, they are needed more, uh, now, more to, now, now needed more than ever. They will be recalled to the Reich and placed directly on the front lines. The traitors will have a nasty surprise waiting for them if they expect a green conscripts. To the infantry division is nice. The troops from the Balkans are loyal to only to themselves and Leo help. Should we lose him, there's no telling what they would do. We will shall see. Oh, don't do it. It's going to take forever to do. You should easily, easily be able to destroy these people. There should be absolutely no question, but they're going to get defense on core territory, I bet. Yeah, they're probably going to get extreme defense on core territory. I'm not going to let up these attacks. I'm sorry, but we're not going to. 1v1. You cannot win. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. This is stupid. 1, 2, 3, 4. A single division. And they made him, like, maybe maybe 40 combat with, maybe? Maybe? I'm sorry, but no. Alright, you're, you're coming in here, too. You're coming in. Uh, why do the deaths just make it difficult? Just unnecessarily difficult. But, hunger pains in the Favalam. It's not something we like to think about or even acknowledge, especially after so many Germans' bells stayed empty in the last... Or bell, bells or bellies stayed empty in the last war, but here we are. Germans all throughout the Reich are going hungry, and that's only in our heartland. Throughout all of our possessions, with few exceptions, our people are going hungry. Thousands upon thousands of the Reich's commissariats have already starved, and projections look grim for those stuck in those far-flung possessions. At home, seemingly draconian rationing procedures have been implemented to assuage the worst of a hunger pangs, but it may very well not be enough. If this civil war lasts as long as the last one, we may have a terrible crisis on our hands, and millions could potentially perish. We have a real mess on our hands. I'm not touching that. No, I mean, come on. There's no way I'm going to touch that. This is dumb, though. This is stupid. How many are fighting? 1v1? That makes more sense. For us to win. Like, seriously. Bro. Go in when you can. Just go in. Go straight in. And I actually wouldn't be deleting a lot of divisions here. I hope we can. Um, I'm not letting up attacks. No. I absolutely refuse to let up attacks. Are you kidding me? You're going to go in and you're going to force the attack. You can all die for all I care. Look at that. Why? You, they can't pierce us. How does militia... Have that much defense? Especially for enemy air superiority? Bro. Bro. Come on. Devs. Man. Come, come on, man. Just take them out as fast as you possibly can. This is stupid. This is really stupid. Soldiers from the Balkans, though. Which is nice. We're going to need that manpower, too. Men on the front lines. What do we even have men in the factories for? What value does a man truly hold if he will not don a helmet and carry a rifle into combat for the sake of his country? We face a life or death struggle for the future of the Reich. Now is the hour of each and every true Aryan man to live up to the standards envisioned by the great Hitler. We need everyone to fight this war. From every floor of every factory and every gal. Any who refuse down their plowshares for swords will be considered traitors to the cause and dealt with appropriately. How good are these guys? Waffen, SS? Eh, they're not bad. Goodbye. Oh, we can't disband them. God, are you... <laughs> Honestly, these bugs are not worth it. I'd rather have them, like, in normal divisions. But seriously, we're not going to let up the attacks. Guys, you got to go now. Cut these guys off. There you go. That's what we want to see. There you go. You should easily be just to be able to destroy them instantly, basically. But no. I don't know, man. Keep going. With these guys in here, we'll do okay. Go in right here, right now. You can encircle these guys and kill them off. That's a goal. 
There we go. Guys, you have a bad word tank. How do you not... How can you not win here? I mean, yeah, maybe the infantry is fighting over the river, but these tanks aren't. Yeah, it'll make it no sense. Uh, make it no sense. Uh. So you just go in, bro. Just go in. This is why I always leave with these guys. Well, usually. How many men have we lost? Eh, could be, could be worse. It's not enough dead guys on that front, though. All right, women in the factories. The Aryan feminists blated for years about wanting the opportunity to work in factories like their husbands. Now they shall have it. With the men shipped off to more suitable locations and occupations, we have a skilled labor shortage that slaves cannot fulfill. True, these women are lacking in experience and the strength of soul that makes men superior workers, but this is judgment day for the Reich. Extreme measures must be taken at home just as readily as on the front lines, and if that includes violating sacrosanct generals, then so be it. Yeah, more divisions, cool. 20... To help me with. Cool, thanks. Bye. Just go to Moscow. Just go. We take how many times do we do this? What? The Civil War continues. The Second German Civil War has not ended. Despite the hopes and thoughts of a quick and clean affair on all sides, the fighting continues. And as the reality of a Civil War spread over all the Reich and its conquests come, come, become clear, the brittleness of Goring's empire is making itself felt. From Britain to the Balkans, from the Scandinavia to Ukraine, unrest is rising. As the subjugate and trampled upon realize their chance for freedom might be coming. Whatever their hopes may end up being, the Reich is surely starting to crack. And the crack only deepens. Yeah, I don't think so, man. I. It seems like we're forced to like be just destroyed. Uh oh. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Oh, Scandinavian did really well. Look at that. Yeah, I'm sorry, but that's literally fake news. That is quite literally fake news, man. Oh, wait, who? Mazier. Oh, okay. Mazier's fighting. There. That's fine. On um, you guys, just in case these guys actually want to attack us. Why, why don't they attack us? Like, I get it. It's Spidal and stuff, but still. Get down there, and you guys can do well. I know you guys can. Oh god. Oh god. Oh, well, there goes the Balkans, too. I honestly don't like this. Can we... Front line, please? No? Yes? Maybe? Somewhere? Yeah. Hello? No? What the heck is going on? Are you not in the faction anymore? What's going on? No, they're not! Oh my gosh. I guess that makes sense, then. Well, we'll help you out when we get down there, man. Just take them all, just kill them all off. And the Balkans are probably exploding a little bit harder, probably. We'll see. Of course, it doesn't help that, uh, actually, you guys are, you guys are honestly kind of okay right there. And then it goes hungry. Yeah, I don't like this. I really don't like this. I prefer the other, the way we had it earlier. It's a lot more fun than this stuff. I mean, we're going to win regardless, don't get me wrong, but still. Because why do we have to garrison all this land, man? Can we set up our own Rex Commissariats again? Wait. Why do you not have... Let's grow! Alright, well, we've won. It... Why can't we go to war with these guys? I, I mean... Why don't we have anything researched? <laughs> what? What? Guys, go. You have to go now. Or us. We're not at war with some of these guys, maybe? I don't want to reconquer all this stuff, man. I don't like this. Just, 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 just go. Just, just do it. Just go. There you go. Was it that difficult, my friends? Was it that difficult? No. Look at I like the Slovakia. Um. There he goes, guys. There he goes. Nice. Alright. Good job, Italy. Please just go. Go. Please. Why, why Why do we lose all of our research? Alright. Not bad. Yeah, I, I really don't like this route. The other route's so much better. Oh, are we at war with these guys yet? Hello, who's this? Kingdom of England and Wales. Not Scotland, but England and Wales. So you get shorter. Ah, Dennis Skinner, look at that. Huh. Ireland. Uh oh. And. Oh, well, there goes North Africa. 
Oh, there goes those guys too. That's not in a second, huh? Gaddafi? I really don't like this. Why does it... I'm, I'm going to have to use console commands to invade him, aren't I? I'm, I don't have the patience to re-literally conquer the entire world. To take these guys out. I'm sorry, but that's stupid. I really do not like that. How can you not just kill these guys off? I swear to God, how? Guys, go in. They're bad word militia. They're militia, for God's sakes. <laughs> how can you not beat them? I swear to God, there's hidden modifiers in this, uh, this, this stupid little war here we got. There's got to be hidden modifiers and stuff. Because we have green air. And we're doing a ton of damage. 30-some damage? That's really good. And you still can't beat a god dang militia division or something like that? Oh my goodness, man. Oh my goodness. Sure, guys, come on in. Are they fighting anything else? I mean, the house is all kind of a mess and lost, but still... How many ways can you break Russia? Oh, the Republic of Catalonia. Well, they finally got their independence, sort of. Belgrade, you gotta go to Belgrade. Okay, nice, nice. Come down here first, and just take them all out this way. There you go. We'll have them done, we'll have them done. Who is this? Is that Italy? Oh, you're back. Leo Hop. Hep. Whatever your name is. Germany under one banner. I'm sorry, but I'm not I'm not gonna wait that long. That's that's stupid. I'm not gonna wait that long. No one no one will wait that long. Why can't we just go to war with them? If we trade us once, we gotta kill them off then. There goes Bosnia, that's good. Anyone else here that we have to still kill? Um Um, no, not really. I guess Sweden, Finland, uh, I'll switch you guys up then. Oh, are we fighting Scandinavian? Are we fighting all Scandinavia then? Oh, that's fine, whatever. I was thinking you guys would back this. Oh my god. The third time in this campaign. That's dumb. I don't like that. For the second time, third time, I don't know at this point. That's why it's one time too many. It's just one time too many. Oh, that was Greece done or something? Or oh, there goes those guys. Okay. Yeah, just kill them off. Oh wait, why are we not? Wait, what? Morocco and what the heck? I wish. Oh my God, they destroyed our. How are we supposed to win the war then? When we have no fleet, the game literally took our fleet away. What? Well, those guys have died, which is nice, actually. Um, this is dumb. All right, is anyone else going to revolt? I mean, we, for the most part, we've taken control of everything here. We've got it under lock and key. I'm sorry. I'm not. If we can't. We can't even go to war with Morocco. I'm not. I'm not doing this. What is it? Annex more. I'm not dealing with that. We, they got rid of our navy. We can't literally do anything about that, so. And I guess we have to use console commands to take these guys out too, so. I don't like that. I really don't like that. Uh, I'd say this is either like. It's probably maybe bugged because it's like basically late game stuff. It might be bugged and or just. I kind of doubt it's the attentions of the developers, but. Yeah, it's got to be bugged. That's so stupid. We're gonna go in. Allow. Oh, hello. No nine in there. Diplo. Yeah, this needs to be cleaned up a little bit more, but maybe that's just me. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah, sorry, you're not the savior of Germany. If we can't go into war with you, I don't understand what, why we're even here then. It literally makes no sense. You're not getting away from us, Slovakia. You are not getting away from us. You're gonna die a very violent death. I don't care who delivers it, they're gonna die. Look, look, look at that BS. Look at this. Armor. I know they're fighting mountains. They're militia, for God's sakes. How big are they? Are they 40 combat width? Wait, why are they militia? If they're, if they're infantry. That doesn't make any sense. 
That literally makes no sense. I don't understand this. Guys, go back, go back. Jesus Christ, go back to Bratislava. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Victory point. Thank you. Come again. Alright, who else were we at war with then? Ah, wait. We already took you guys out. Oh my god. Why? Why? Why do you pain us so? Please just keep going in. Just go all the way. Do we have... Goodbye. Spider, please. A great deal of effort was made to push harder, deeper into the territory which once heroic Spider controlled. So much men sacrificed for this day. So much equipment has been used up as if they were resources. All in the name of victory that went into the hands of those who saw Spider fleeing a plane which took him in his sap out of heck which he had, which held those left behind to delay them. Confirmed. Reports later transmitted a shortness command established that Spider has found himself in the safer territory, serving in the capacity of a general who with his own government in exile. Unconfirmed reports spoke of his intentions to return in the name of the beating back Shorn and his men. No matter what happens, and no matter who prevails, there can only be one thing left to do for both men, for they were clothed in immense power, surrounded by capable officers, each with a vast army, to keep on fighting for the sake of Germany. And it seemed to Spidal that if he must fight on from a land that is separate from his homeland, then he would do so without delay, just as Shona would if he were in his place. But this time, he was not, and he would not think of port or of it, for he would rather think of victory and later of assuming rule over the land of his people, and to see the execution of Germany's might. Germany would be questioned by none. Now we have Germany under one banner. Our situation remains precarious, but the worst of the fires have been extinguished as the traitors have been driven from the Reich's proper. Our forces have completely secured the German hotlands and are now busying themselves with mopping up the last holdouts and partisan cells. Spidel and Shona have fled like cowards they are, but their forces are already rallying in the Reich's commissariats aligned with their respective sides. Owing to the breadth of our conquest and the chronic disloyalty of the various Reich's commissars, they remain in possession of a great deal of land, resources, and manpower. The fight must be taken beyond Germany, but it will be a long, hard road of victory from here on out. Yeah, no, I'm done. I'm done. I'm not reconquering all this territory again. We've done it once. I'm not doing it again. Why would you design something like that? Man, that sucks. It makes sense. To a degree, but, bro, like, let us go to war with other people that we need to go to war with, man. Who are we war with? Find Azin? There's no sense of peace. Civil and police disobedience in the Netherlands, partisans blowing up tunnels all over Switzerland, tensions in Austria not even seen since the First World War, Civil War. The Polish resistance is re-emerging, all, the All-Russian Congress looks to Moscow. A desperate message. Didn't stop coming, but to the common man on the streets. <clears throat> on the... Uh, come on, stop lagging so... Oh my god. Oh my god. On the streets of the Reich, they are barely registered. Those that hadn't died or been drafted cared little for other than surviving another day. Still bred in. Still bred out. After all the wars that had the world had seen in the last decades, growing numb was easy. Spato, Shorn, and Goring, who cares? While the fractures work themselves into even the loser acquisitions of the Reich, the core of the Reich remains calm, but more out of apathy than the, of the few that remain. The dawn will come. It has to come. It has to come, right? Yeah, I don't like this. I'm sorry, man. I don't like this one. This is dumb. I don't like this. Um, and then these guys are here, too. Fun. Wait, are you really fighting me? You're my general! What the heck? Oh, that's kind of cool. Sweden's down here. Got them then, of course. Little pockets of resistance here and there. I'm sorry, I can't really care too much about it. I'm sorry, you don't really care. I'm sorry, but I'm done. The light of the Germanic Empire. For an efficient future. Well, it looks like, uh... They've reloaded the Norwegian focus tree, it looks like, probably. Yeah, I think I played as him before, so. Is that it? Is that it for us? There goes Dietzland. We just <laughs> we just stood on their territory. I think that's gotta be it, right? We also division here. That sucks. Um, yeah, I think that's gotta be it. Uh, you know what, for old time's sake, let's crush the poles one more time, why not? Sure guys, you wanna come on in, that's fine. Give me all your divisions, I'll delete them immediately. Thank you, come again. I'm sorry, man, but I'm not gonna reconquer all this stuff again. I I'm just not. How are these guys doing? Kazakhstanis killing Kazakhstanis. <gasps> Gaziz, hello. Have we, have we, have we been back? Go, please go in. Just Krakow needs to be ours. Lublin, yes. Stanislaw, yes. Belarus, yes. Okay, we're literally taking all, literally all their territory. Come on, come on now. Okay, they're not dying. I don't understand this game. What the heck? I mean, you, you'll be fine doing that, but still. Belarus, no faction.
We've done this. I've literally done this once already in this this video. Wait, why, why do we have to, look at this crap? I mean, you, there there are there's seriously, there's got to be right, some sort of hidden modifiers in the, in the game right now because we gave these guys air superiority, right? Like, no joke. Um, we want these guys to be done. Good. Spread them out a little bit more. Keep going. You're doing a good job. Just go up through here. Good. And good revolve. Nice. Oh, uh, excuse me. Thank you. And there they go, too. Cool. And you guys are going to come through here, too. Because we're just going to kill Sweden. Excuse me, game. Alright, and right there. And do that. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't like this. I, got, I said this several times already, but, like, I really don't like this. We've done well. We did well again and again and again and again. Just to be killed off like this? That's not cool. That's really not cool, man. And they, they literally got rid of the entire navy. I mean, I guess it makes sense. We didn't really help them out too much, but still. Hello, Diplo. Oh, hello. That's wrong. Hello, Diplo. Go in. You know what we're gonna do? We'll do this. Let him come in. Keep going, guys. You'll be fine. Oh! Norway is very violent right now. And this is how we're gonna win. Let him come in. And let's just take him out. There you go. Go in. Whoa, 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 whoa. Four, how, four divisions are holding out against us. How? How the hell does that work? Seriously. How? The Reich splinters. War, war never ends. As the second German civil war drags on further and further, the warning signs came ever closer to the core of Germany's fires. For Germany. First, it was some far-flung recent conquest, then the gains of the Second World War, but now it is Germany itself. No one quite knows how it first happened. There was no uprising, for there were only as old and young left in the streets. There was no separatism, for everything and everyone that wasn't German was already out. There were no grandiose statements for whoever shown a spite of the goring war, or if they were still among the living is unknown. But order controls breaking down, and the ruins of the Reich Wehrmacht generals of all stripes and convictions are carving out their own fiefdoms. Warlords, some of their own for their own gain, some to reunite the Reich under their ideology and some, and name. Some just to protect the few that remain, but all agree on one thing, the Re Third Reich is gone. Only tell them to there will be a fourth one. Vesin Valoran. I don't like this. this is, that's stupid. No. That, I mean, we're, we're literally winning here. We've literally got conquered all the Reich again. Why? Why? Like, it's one thing if you have a second civil war, but we're winning. Oh, but at least we have the collapse. There you go. Oh, is it? Go to the next one. Cool. Alright, so like, that's not cool. I, I really don't like this. Like I said before. Eh, hey, Goring's here. But, you're just like, forced to collapse when you go down this route. Which makes some sense, but I just don't like it. Especially as we took out everyone else. Oh, I switch a flat Rex front? Uh, let's see, who else do we have here? Um, Gebugs, Yakuk, Osman. He looks pretty happy, but... Ah, oh, Steinhoff is here. Hans Kohlschotten? Koch. United for Oslo, that's cool. That's good. Nothing but trees. Yeah, uh, uh, we're well, pretty much done here, because... The Republic of Ukraine, yeah. I don't know. The second German Civil War, it makes sense, but if you, it makes sense if you lose hard. Like, if you lose very hard, then it makes sense for this all to collapse, but... As we all saw... We were doing okay. We were still killing everyone else off. Like, they're forcing us to collapse for no reason. Hey, Nasser. Oh, I've seen you earlier today. Um, Republic of Orungu. But, yeah, that, yeah, this is probably one of my least favorite things that happened here. And Thatcher comes back. Out of the grave, Thatcher comes back from the grave. I mean, that's just, that's got to piss a lot of people off. But, hey, I guess that's me. But I did this just because some people wanted to see what this was like. So, I think this will be the end of this campaign. But... If you want to... Ooh, actually, Goring's Germany is still down here, which doesn't make any sense, but whatever. And Burgundy still exists for some reason. And, oh, Switzerland's back too. But, 
we're not technically done with this save because there might be another part of uh, America that we gotta check out for another series. But hey, if you managed to continue watching through all my rants and complaints, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already, and I'll catch you tomorrow in another series in which we could explore a little bit more about my favorite nation, America. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.